All right, so let's move on to the second part of the explosion separation problem notes here. We're gonna go ahead and do an example problem or two on explosion separation. So the first thing I want you to do is consider a loaded cannon. So we have the cannon itself here, and then we've got the cannonball inside it. This is kind of like our two carts that are together in the moving inertia lab, right? We have two objects. We've got the cannon itself, and then we've got the cannonball. They are together, okay? They are attached in this case, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and light the fuse. There's gonna be an explosion. There's gonna be an internal force, okay? So the cannon acts on the cannonball. The cannonball acts on the cannon, okay? The force is internal, so momentum here will be conserved, all right? So as the objects push off of each other, the cannonball undergoes an X, a force that causes it to push out, okay, of the cannon, and then the Cannon has a force pushing it backwards as well that's going to cause it to roll backwards. So how does the momentum of the cannon and the cannonball system before it's fired compare to after? So how does the momentum, total momentum before, compare to the total momentum after? Take three seconds. Think about the answer here. Your choices are it's going to be greater, less, same, or incomparable. Well, as we know from our previous notes, momentum is conserved in the absence of an external force. There are no external forces here, folks, so the momentum after will, of course, be the same. Momentum is conserved. No way around it. So we know that the loaded cannon before we shoot it is just sitting there. So the momentum before we shoot it is going to be zero. That tells me that after we shoot it, the sum of the momentum of the cannonball and the cannon will also be zero. This should make sense, though, because we have the cannonball coming out to the right, which we would consider to be the positive direction, and we've got the cannon recoiling to the left in what we consider to be the negative direction. So if we sum a negative and positive momentum together, it's definitely possible for us to get a total momentum of zero. Okay, and what we can also then say, of course, is that the momentum of the cannon and cannonball should be equal and opposite if they are to cancel out to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a practice problem here. We've got a 1,000 kilogram cannon. It's going to fire a cannonball that is 10 kilograms outward at 400 meters per second. We want to find the velocity of the cannon. Now, whenever I do these types of problems, I like to draw myself a picture. It helps me stay organized. It also helps me determine what equation to use because believe it or not, there's more equations coming down the pipeline here, folks. So I'm going to start with that. Okay, I'm going to say, hey, I've got my cannon here. I'm going to draw my picture. There's my cannon, and we're going to load it up with a cannonball. So we've got two objects together. We've got a momentum of object one and two together. Okay, then we're going to fire it. Okay, and our cannon is going to recoil out to the left, and our cannonball is going to come out to the right. So now, at the end, we have two separate objects. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the momentum of the system before the explosion, and then we're going to need to compare that to the momentum of our system after the explosion. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, though, here is we're going to go ahead and expand our equations out further. Okay, our loaded cannon consists of the cannon itself and the cannonball. Okay, and because they are together, they're going to be moving with a common velocity, right? However fast that cannon is moving here at the beginning, the cannonball is in it. So the cannonball is going to move at the same velocity. So we'll multiply that by some common velocity. Okay, and then afterwards, we're going to have our cannon, which I'm calling my object one. It's going to be moving to the left with its own velocity. We'll call that V1. Cannonball comes out to the right. It's going to move to the right with its own inertia, own mass, at its own unique velocity. So we'll call that V2. Okay, now it's really just time to look at the information we have, plug it into the proper positions, and solve uh, for the unknown here. So the unknown is going to be the velocity of the cannon. Okay, so our cannon is our object one. That means we're going to be solving for V1 in this case. But let's go ahead and sub in and let's uh, see how the math shakes out. So our object one is our cannon, which is 1,000 kilograms. We're going to add to that our mass of our cannonball, which is 10 kilograms. Okay, and our cannon is at rest before we shoot it. So that means our cannon and cannonball have a velocity of zero meters per second. Okay, we're going to fire uh, the cannon. Uh, cannon's going to recoil to the left. 
Okay, cannonball's coming out to the right. So I'm going to call my left my negative and right my positive. Okay, so if my cannon is recoiling to the left, it's going to still have its mass of 1,000 kilograms. But now it's moving to the left at some velocity, which I do not know what that is. So I'm going to call that my V1. And then we're going to add to that the momentum of the cannonball coming out to the right, which has a mass of 10 kilograms. And it's coming out to the right at 400 meters per second, which is our positive direction. So we're going to multiply that by 400 meters per second. We'll go ahead and clean this thing up. Uh, 1,000 plus 10 is 1,010 times zero. That's just going to be zero kilograms meters per second, the momentum at the beginning. And then the momentum at the end is going to be 1,000 kilograms times V1. We can't simplify that down. Plus 10 times 400, which is going to be 4,000 kilograms meters per second. Uh, let's go ahead and get that V1 by itself. We'll subtract 4,000 from both sides. We'll get negative 4,000 kilograms meters per second equals... 1,000 kilograms times V1. We'll divide both sides by 1,000, and we will arrive at our answer here. Negative 4,000 divided by 1,000 is going to be negative 4 meters per second, which is our velocity 1. So if we take a second and we look at that answer and check for understanding here, does that make sense that the velocity of the cannon recoiling to the left would only be 4 meters per second? Well, yeah, the cannon has a mass of 1,000. The cannonball has a mass of only 10. The cannon is 100 times heavier, so it should be moving 100 times slower, which, sure enough, 4 meters per second is 100 times slower than 400. Uh, also, does it make sense that the velocity would be negative? Absolutely. That cannon should be recoiling to the left, which is the negative direction. Okay, so... Please make sure that you have this work in your notes for the cannon problem. Let's go ahead and try one more here, and then we're going to let you give a sh uh, take a shot at one more of these in formative. So go ahead and bounce to the next problem here. We've got Sideshow Bob, who's always up to no good, with his loaded cannon again here. We're just going to change a few parameters, but the approach is going to be almost the exact same. So now we've got Sideshow Bob sitting on the loaded cannon. So again, our system is still Sideshow Bob, cannon, and cannonball. Okay, Sideshow Bob's got a mass of 100 kilograms. Cannon is still 1,000 kilograms. Cannonball is still 10. But once Sideshow Bob sits in the cannon, now the cannonball is coming out at 402 meters per second. So this time we want to find out how fast does the cannonball, or sorry, cannon, pardon me, with Sideshow Bob on top recoil back. So let's go ahead and set it up and solve, and let's see if we can do it. So what do we know? We know the momentum before is going to be equal to the momentum after. So the momentum before is going to be, we have the loaded cannon and cannonball together, right? It's Sideshow Bob, cannon, cannonball, all the parts are together. So we're going to have two objects together, object one plus object two. After the cannon is fired, we're going to have object one and two are now separate. Okay, so we can expand that out a little bit further. Okay, the loaded cannon is going to be the mass of the cannon plus the mass of the cannonball times the common velocity. Okay, and then at the end, we're going to have the momentum of the cannon, which is M1, V1, separate from the momentum of the cannonball, which is M2, V2. Okay, so now basically we're ready to just sub everything in. The only difference between this problem and the previous is that Sideshow Bob is 100 kilograms and he's going to sit on top of that cannon, basically just making the cannon heavier by 100 kilograms. That's the only difference. The cannonball does come out at a slightly different velocity, but the approach to this problem is going to be the same. So M1 is going to be our cannon which is 1,100 kilograms. That's cannon with Sideshow Bob sitting on it, plus the cannonball, which is 10 kilograms. Before we shoot it, it's not moving, so that means the loaded cannon has a velocity of zero meters per second. Then we fire the cannon. So the cannon with Sideshow Bob is going to recoil backwards. Again, we do not know the velocity of the cannon. That's the whole point of the problem. So the 
cannon with sideshow bob on it is 1100 kilograms moving backwards with an unknown velocity the cannonball comes out it has a mass of 10 kilograms moving at a rate of 400.2 meters per second we can now go ahead and clean this up and we can solve for the velocity of the cannon as it recoils back to the left so uh 1100 plus 10 times zero is just going to give us a momentum of zero kilograms meters per second which is the total momentum before meaning the total momentum after will have to be zero kilograms and meters per second because momentum is conserved okay we're going to have 1100 kilograms times v1 for our cannon recoiling to the left and then our cannonball coming out to the right is going to be 10 times 400.2 which is just 4002 kilograms meters per second then we'll go ahead clean it up we'll get the 4002 over to the left hand side by subtracting it from both sides so negative 4,002 kilograms meters per second is equal to 1,100 kilograms times V1. And then we'll divide 1,100 kilograms into both sides of the equation. And we will get our answer here. Negative 4,002 divided by 1,100 will be our final answer here. which is approximately 3.64 meters per second. Negative, pardon me, 3.64 meters per second is V1. So uh, the cannon recoils backwards at a slightly lower rate. We added mass to it. We gave it more inertia. So it recoiled at an even lower rate than before. And then what we see here is that the cannonball comes out at an even higher rate uh, because, again, the cannon and Sideshow Bob had even more resistance to change. Um, so, this, ladies and gentlemen, is how we're going to go ahead and approach our explosion separation problems. Okay, establish that there is conservation. Okay, we're going to determine what type of problem it is. Here, it's an explosion separation problem. Then, we're going to go ahead and expand that equation to show our masses and individual velocities. Then we're going to go ahead and substitute in our values, okay? And then from there, we do the algebra. This is what we need to see from start to end to get full credit on any sort of calculation within this unit, okay? So please make sure, take a few seconds, pause the video if you need to, and write all of this down into your notes. The next step of the lesson for today is you'll jump into formative and we have a few of these for you to try. Please use your notes as you go through and do these um, and take some time to go ahead and practice this. Good luck.